Hello everyone, uh, Simpatico from iHearthU here. Just to let you guys know that we had a little bit of a problem with the recording of this week's Turn 2, and I sincerely apologize. We had a uh, XSplit crash, and um, our backup was not enabled this time, which is uh, really unfortunate because it was a great episode. So very, very sorry that we lost the first little bit of the show. Um, but we do have the last, I, I, about half, three quarters of the show. So, um, yeah, hope you, hopefully you guys enjoyed that, and uh, yeah, this shouldn't ever happen again. So, uh, without further ado, enjoy this week's episode of Turn 2. Have a good one. Okay, sorry guys for technical difficulties. <clears throat> We're back. So, um, schedule just as part of the the nature and brutality. Like you're gonna be like on Twitter if you're following a lot of the players, you're gonna be hearing a lot of whining and moaning about schedules and like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I have to wake up and stuff. As part of it, the adjustment period, everyone has to deal with it. So, um, just be prepared for the saltiness on social media when some things don't go the, the players' ways. It's just natural. Don't blame the tournament organizer. They can't make everybody happy. Well, I can give one advice to people playing on Saturday because the uh, bring your own computer guys will play a lot more rounds than the top 16 guys. So what you really need there is stamina. Uh, I know it's like hard to get stamina with if, if, if this is the first experience for, for you, but uh, mostly you'll be playing the whole day. And if you're winning, you have uh, well, you will have adrenaline mostly. But uh, if you're winning and playing. So many games, there is like mental stress, uh, well, you will get tired, you can make misplays. So at the, at the end of the day, it's really tiring to, to go through this experience. So my advice is on Friday night, go to sleep. Just go to sleep, rest, so that Saturday morning you'll be able to play like 11 hours of games nonstop. And I yeah, that's, that's one way to do it. But then you don't have the good stories. What happens on Friday nights? So you will <laughs> be part. You You'll be listening. To yeah. Me. I, and I also hang think out with uh, whoever dares hangs out with me. I'm gonna. I will be at DreamHack, and that's where actually a, a cool announcement will be coming when I arrive to DreamHack. Um, I've been telling people about it, and uh, it's it's really cool. Um, so I'll be doing stuff like that because uh, I can't actually give out too many more details. Oh man, you're announcing the announcement. Nice. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I've been working on a Hearthstone project recently, and I'm actually really excited to to be working with them. So um, you guys will see more on DreamHack. But I'll be hanging out with people on Friday. If you're at DreamHack, come say hi to me, and uh, we're gonna have a good time. Nice. What are your plans for Friday night? Yeah, I hope that I can find my hotel, man. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I'm flying uh, Friday really late. I, I, I will fly to Gothenburg and I will arrive at 6 p.m. So I, I, I'm just uh, going to find my uh, hotel, I think. Maybe. Oh, okay. That's fine. All right. Well, I'm going to yeah. go get dinner and some stuff. You're welcome to join. Anyone else is welcome to join, too. I'll probably be there as well. Cool. Okay, let's move on. Um, the next topic is on gamers launching a new talk show called Well Met. Wait, wait. I thought we agreed that before we ended this segment, we should give like why everyone should be watching DreamHack, like in a quick summary. Did we? We can. Yeah. Yeah. So like Nimsh, give me give me the reasons. Give me like a very quick summary of why people should watch DreamHack this weekend, in your opinion. Uh, okay, so my first first thought that comes to my mind is like DreamHack Bucharest had a lot of good players, but when compared to DreamHack Summer, uh, which is this uh, this weekend, we have best players in the world, and uh, there is so many good players at the tournament that the games will be super high level. So that's definitely a, a, a certain reason that you should watch watch it. Cool. Taj. 
yeah, Dream Hack is uh, is the first really 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 big tournament that uh, with a uh, really good rules and also uh, with a really good prize pool. So I think that uh, it's a really good reason to watch, and I'm really excited for it. Froden. Oh, oh, yeah. Sorry, I have to answer too. Um, you guys <laughs> absolutely should be logging on to v Viacom.com or via game. I don't know Viacom.com to watch the DreamHack tournament because it is the biggest tournament in Hearthstone yet, and it's gonna. There's gonna be storylines and inside jokes you're gonna be missing out on if you don't watch it. So be there. It's gonna be casted by wonderful commentators. It's gonna be a lot of fun games played by the highest level of the highest concentration of talent in Hearthstone yet. So make sure to be there or be square. And if you are playing, dress well because there will be That's a right. fashion. There is also a fashion contest oh, uh, for Hearthstone players. I actually, I actually didn't really? to tell people. <laughs> Wait, no, there is not. She's just talking about the blog. Um, I'm actually signed up to compete in the BYOC too. I forgot about this. But I'm on the I'm on the waiting list, so I don't know if I'm allowed to play uh, until I find out on the day. But I did sign up to play in the tournament. So in before Frodo makes top sixteen, yeah. maybe you'll see me in Group C, and we're gonna yeah, have a turn two this. group of death. Oh yeah, we welcome you. Yeah, that's you right. You guys won't even know what hits you. Yeah, but also, it's really funny. We need to play on the iPads. It's, it's also oh, we, really we covered that already last. Us. We already covered that last week, Taj, with okay. how ridiculous that might look. <laughs> and see. Oh, it yeah, I funny. remember, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, done with Dreamhack? Satisfied? Frodan? Are you satisfied? Uh, yes, with I'm satisfied. I'm fine. Okay, Dice, you want to add anything yeah. else? No. Okay. So, uh, quickly, on Gamers, well met. There is a new show. Um, it's a talk show. The guests are asking questions. They're inviting different. They will be inviting different players. I'm in the first episode. The talk show is about the player mostly. So, uh, right here at turn two, we are discussing discussing meta game, discussing news. Um, more or less the same thing. It's going on on Chanman's show. Um, Value Town. Well met will be about the players. So if you um, want to learn more about a certain player, maybe you can contact on gamers. Uh, who should they pick? Um, but mostly, it's. Uh, I think it's an interesting show. Like, I, I would like to know more about certain players, uh, learn about their their background, their past, their achievements, or their their failures in life. Also, sometimes it's interesting if it's not too sad. So, uh, pretty interesting show. Uh, what do you guys think? Did you actually see the show? You know, do you know about it? Probably not. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I have read it, and uh, I I haven't. It was really long, so I haven't watched the full episode. I watched the. Uh, 30 minutes or something yeah but yeah i really liked it it was really uh it was really about the player and yeah a, a really good show in general in my opinion but they shouldn't make it shorter 19 mi 19 minutes yeah is it a was lot. really long that was the reason why i i didn't watch the whole episode yeah i actually did an interview with them this morning and it'll come out on friday we talk about everything from like what happened with ESGN, not from a super in-depth perspective. I think people are hoping to hear answers. Uh, but we do touch on the topic uh, a good amount. Um, and I talk about some other stuff as well. So it's a cool series. Um, it's not only players, apparently, because they asked me to do it. Oh, come on, you're a player. It'll Throw come them. out on Friday. <laughs> Throw them, please. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, in a sense, like I have access to play the game, yes. Legend every season. Dreamhack. Bring your own seat. Yeah. Top streamer. Top 16, almost. Oh Dreamhack. You, <laughs> you guys are too much. You're just that good, man. Like, you know. I've actually never lost a Nibsh before. So, yeah, this is 100% win rate. <laughs> That's right. Me either. Tice, Tice, <laughs> well, you, you lost one game, Tice. And yeah, I lost on one game. Yeah, you're true. Okay, guys, let's move on. So the next topic we have is uh, oh we actually lost Frodan yeah no I'm here oh Frodan's oh. here okay nice so this is more uh, a question to Dice Zotac and ESL qualify for BlizzCon we discussed this already but we didn't discuss the tournament the tournaments because well Zotac was this this kind of a small tournament for 200 people small but now uh, people actually 
uh, it's hard to, qu uh, to to sign up for the tournament because there is a limited number of seats, 500 plus. And when you forget to check check in for the tournament, mm -hmm. you're just out. Mm -hmm. So if you're late, if you slack, you you, ca you can't play Zodak. And also there's this ESL tournament on Saturday, uh, on Sunday, uh, having like 700 people signing up for that as well. So Thais, what do you think about those tournaments? Like you've played them before. Have you played them now? Like after they qualify, what's the what's the change? Uh, uh, I I haven't played the last uh, two weeks. Uh, it were really busy weeks for me. That was the main reason. But I really like the fact uh, that Blizzard gave uh, a qualified spot to the community tournaments. Uh, it's just a, it is the best way for people people to get known. If they can can get a qualified spot for BlitzCon, they can they can probably qualify them for BlitzCon. So. It's the it's the best way for all the people that uh, are looking for a way to get uh, known in this game uh, to play the tournaments and yeah I the a bit uh, now uh, when you need to qualify you I think it's really it's way harder uh, to play the tournament when I played the Sotek it was always with uh, around two three hundred people it was already hard and a lot of good players. But yeah, with now 500 people fighting for the spot, it's uh, yeah, it's just way. It is really hard now. But I hope they will make the tournament a bit bigger because uh, the the uh, Sotek uh, last week it was in uh, 10 or 50 minutes. It was already full, so I hope that they will go to uh, 1,000 players or something, that everyone can get a chance and not only the guys that can. Uh, can claim their spot uh, really quick. Frodan, have you tried them? Yep. Have I tried them? No. Um, maybe maybe I'll just try to get top 16 on ladder instead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> or maybe I'll just win DreamHack. Oh, man. Yeah, who top knows? Three, top 3 is fine. You don't have to take the, the spot. No, I'm going go, to go above and beyond. Get more seeding points. Okay. Um, on a serious note, though, um, you know, I actually, and this is kind of a separate topic, but I really do believe this is this is actually a completely different topic. Um, but I do believe that commentators of the game should be good at Hearthstone, or at least like, no, I, I I'm not going to take that back. They should be good at Hearthstone. Um, I I don't really care too much for people's commentary who don't understand at least an. L, like an intermediate level and above. I'm not asking people to be top 16 legendary every season. I'm asking them to be good. And good is not like, oh man, I'm like, I'm like only legend 500. I'm not good. Like, there's a lot of people who kind of consider that. I'm I'm considering that you're like a lot better than most of the people at the game because I feel like it's a it's a game you can't really get away with commentary wise. So I do try to play a lot and improve my own personal skill. And um, while, while trying to do cool stuff, build my own decks and whatnot, and uh, that, that's some, that's partially why I really enjoy you know Artosis and Admirable's commentary because they're both really good at the game. Um, you know when Artosis is trying <laughs> to be good at Hearthstone, but sometimes he's focused on Starcraft, so he's not. He's kind of like battling in between. Um, so I might sign up for some of these cups. I, I might not. It depends on how things pan out in my upcoming schedule. Uh, but my primary goal is just to be better at Hearthstone. Um, and that's why maybe a more realistic goal is just try to aim for the top things of legend as opposed to like go through these gauntlets where there's like 500 people gunning yeah. for one spot. It's kind of intense. I would definitely recommend trying tournaments because it's a very different experience anyway. Um, I'm, I think it will help you understand the um, emotion level and like commitment to the tournament. And it's also like a question I can ask to Thais. Like, Thais, what would you... Advi uh, what would be your advice to the players who want to um, be first, like with regards to the decks? What should they anticipate? Like, because it's really hard to get uh, the first deck, the starter deck, and the counters. Like, what would be your best advice to them? Should they? Well, just go ahead. Like, I won't suggest an answer. Yeah. Well, uh, in uh, clips like Showtech, uh, my uh, from my opinion, uh, in the first, I think first two rounds, you can only ex expect aggro. If you don't know the player, there are so many uh, zoo players uh, last season, a lot of hunter players. So uh, in the first two rounds, I was playing uh, decks that were okay against aggro, just uh, decks that are 
that can win uh, every matchup. And yeah, after the first two the first uh, two rounds, people playing a bit more uh, the the yeah the meta decks and yeah, it's always hard to uh, say uh, what your opponent is playing if you don't know them because you you can't know. But yeah, I, I always but yeah, I go always. Uh, I had a lot of success in the tournament with my own druid that uh, won me like two or three tournaments. I, w I always started with my own uh, Druid version. It's a bit outdated now. It's, uh, it was uh, in the Hunter meta really good. But yeah, that, that uh, brought me a lot of success actually. And yeah, and you see like this is very interesting because there is a strategy. It's not like just getting the three best decks and, and winning the King, of the King of the Hill style. Well, you have this uh, entry level um, of the tournament, like a couple of first rounds when we have to deal with the, those and try to stay alive. Then you enter another stage where you have to maybe switch decks again because you have the meta games, and then you have the late game stage of the uh, of the tournament where you again have to adjust. And also information is king again because if you face like if you face me, you can quickly check what decks I'm playing, or you already did that, so you know what, you, what I play. Like if you face Blackout or whoever that we know. We mostly know that, uh, that those those people's preference. Like, if I would face Reels, for example, I would presume that he would be playing Miracle Rogue or maybe Druid because he was playing those decks before. So there is a lot coming into winning those tournaments, and that's why uh, that that's how we deal with uh, RNG in those tournaments. Because a lot of people say like, "Hey, so many people, the RNG is so high. Like, there is no way I will just win this tournament." And then they there are people like like Thais who just go into the tournament, they refuse to be knocked out for the like six rounds, and then in the end like they either win it or face an, an, an even opponent, and well, there the, car the cards just go uh, one way or the other, but uh, consistently just you go for the first five, six rounds of every tournament. Yeah, I don't like the fact that people call it RNG. Yeah, of course you have sometimes the rounds or you, sometimes you you have just a really bad hand or a match that you can't win. But yeah, that's the reason why it is best of three and not a best of one. If it was best of one, yeah, I will totally agree uh, that just the lucky player can win it. But with best of three, you can uh, play a lot more strategy. Uh, you try to win the first game. If you win the first game, you can counter really good in the, if, if he is able to win the second game. So yeah, uh, in the tournaments like this, uh, to win the first round is really important because uh, yeah, Sotak changed the rule three weeks ago. But uh, before three weeks ago, they couldn't uh, couldn't make uh, switches switches in the deck. Now you can sideboard a bit, but before that, it wasn't possible. So it was uh, yeah, you call you called really good counter. You there was really a you called really counter your opponent really good, and now it's a bit harder with uh, Blitzcon spots and they changed the rules, but but I really like uh, the tournament play way more than the ladder. It's uh, a bit more strategy, the, the ladder feels a bit random for me sometimes. Then I, then I play two games against Sue and then, then I think, ah, let's let's play a deck that is good against Sue. And then I'm, I meet uh, two, uh, two hand locks and uh, yeah. it's just a bit frustrating sometimes. Sometimes you should come play like, on NA where it's only Miracle Roads. Yeah. So, man. Very easy to counter if you're, <laughs> you're me. Well, counter from like you know what deck you're playing, but not get countered because it's Miracle Rogue, So. <laughs> okay. Frodan, do you have anything to add with regards to Zotag and ESL? You should play them, really. I think, uh, I, okay, well, I did play in some cups actually early in the beta, and I won a couple, but that's a lot. that was a lot different times when, um, God, I played Rogue, and everyone played Rogue, and I coined out my Defias for 2-3-2-1. Two, two, <laughs> I think yeah. this, these tournaments okay. are really important, and Blizzard has done it right this time. Bl I kind of said this in my yeah. well-met interview, but I'm okay with saying this now, too. That I think Blizzard is doing Hearthstone completely right right now. Um, they're not over-investing. All they said is, look, we're going to have a really cool party at the end of the year, and people can qualify for it, and we're going to make other things matter, so that way you don't feel like you're just twiddling your thumbs into one big tournament. Um, Zotac, the e ESL stuff, other big events, that being relevant is so cool to the fact that everybody gets equal chance, and the best part 
is that if you don't qualify from ladder, if you don't qualify from online events or offline events, the catch-all is the last qualifier tournament. So there is absolutely zero excuse for anybody who deserves to have a BlizzCon seed to not have one. People who always kind of sideline or side, what is, what's the term, sidearm quarterback, where they, uh, they just kind of like stay at their computers and say, oh my god, this guy, this thing is an RNG fest. I could definitely be bit playing this and be better than everyone else. You have zero excuses not to at least be in the BlizzCon qualifier. Um, now winning, that's a different topic. But I think Blizzard's doing it really well in terms of opening it up with and making something matter without putting all their eggs in one basket and growing it in an organic way. Um, this is really cool, and I really hope that they continue to develop this idea while still pushing out Nax Ramis. I'm sorry, but every time I think about it, it's like, can that expansion come already? Good Everybody's fun. asking me, like, do you have any insider info? Can you spoil it? Yeah. This summer, Nax Ramis will hit the shows. More and more, the more um, whenever I hear a um, player complain about RNG and stuff like that, I just I file them in the scrub category in my mind, and I kind of put it away for filing later, <laughs> because okay, that's... it's starting to get to the point where like people are really proving that as much as RNG does suck and you kind of get gimped out of stuff from time to time, um, the better players win over time or the long. Run. Yeah, that's that's entirely true. That's entirely true. Okay, and. Uh... Talking about the better player wins, um, there was a tournament in Paris. Uh, it was called Gamers Origin Cup, and I believe it was hosted by uh, Harson FR Strategy YouTube side. Uh, the guys are doing great job on the French market for Harson. And uh, this tournament, well, actually, we have a bracket here. The tournament was won by Savitz. Apparently, Thais was invited mm -hmm. by, but refused because he was too busy. Mm -hmm. That's right, Thais? Yeah, I called, but uh, yeah, I was too busy this weekend. I had to, yeah, not too bu too busy, but I needed to work a lot, <laughs> and I had a good uh, good festival, so that was the reason why I was not going. And yeah, it was uh, to Paris, so. So to and put with, things uh, into also with Dreamhack and coming, I I was like, yeah, let let's skip this one uh, for one time. I will really want to go to the next one. Yeah, because it was last, uh, well, it was this weekend, right? Or last weekend. Yeah, it was this weekend. Yeah, 200 people, 201. And that one person was Savitz. And he won. I'm not sure how many rounds they played, but it was a lot of rounds, I'm sure. And a lot of different decks, a lot of players. So Savitz took it down. Um, and we actually got decks from the organizers, but we can't publish Savitz's decks. Also because of DreamHack, and he asked... Uh, to, well, he asked for us to be, you know, not spoil his decks. But we have the decks of the second place, who was Dante. And those decks are kind of interesting. Have you guys had a look at the decks? Yeah, I have. I, have. I will look at them now. Okay, let's, let's actually look at Shaman first. All right. It seems like a really standard Shaman, not a lot of things, but he really likes the late game stuff like the uh, Sylvanas, also the Ysera is really new for me in the Shaman deck. But for the, uh, for the other cards are really similar for me. There's one Argent Squire, is it fine? I mean... Yeah, I, I see a lot, of, a lot of people playing with just one because... Uh, it's a good card if you have it early in your hand, but if you draw it really late, it's just a dead card most of the time. So I, I understand the one Art and Squire. And what do you think about Isera instead of Alakir? I don't like it. I I shall play it with Alakir, but okay. yeah, he is he is second place, so yeah, for for him, uh, it worked. It, it worked. Frodan. Well, if, I mean, he gets the card he wants every time from you, Sarah, maybe it doesn't matter. Well, I do, and I still don't <laughs> play it. <laughs> yeah, it's a very interesting choice. I just, I mean, I don't know. I didn't see the games. Um, I think it so was in stream, actually. Know. It's a, it's a pity it? that it was. I don't think it was. Or if it uh, was, it was streamed in, in French anyway. I mm -hmm. think they are working on some VODs and might post them. Um, Later oh, okay. this week, maybe. So, 
It would be interesting. I would really love to see this deck playing versus Savitz's decks. Mm-hmm. Well, um, they, I can only... spoiler alert, they lost, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah they did. Looking get that out of <laughs> I was looking for the stream, but I couldn't find any stream or something from it. So, Shaman yeah, deck... Yeah. There's a very high possibility. Sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah, no problem. There's a very real possibility that Yasera is like one of the only legendaries he has. Well, not oh, only. Yeah, like, <laughs> it might oh, be on. just like a legendary that he has that he can't, he doesn't have out here. So maybe he just replaces it with another powerful late game creature that he has, like Yasera. But then I look at some of his other decks, and he also has Ragnaros, and I think Rag would fit better in the Shaman than Yasera, but I don't know. Well, he had four, so, four legendary cards in this deck, so... Maybe let's look at his... No, uh, I was talking about Shaman, but we can move to Mage, to the Mage deck. Because Mage deck is a bit different than the standard decks, I guess. Okay. Um, Are we looking at Mage? We're looking at Mage. Yeah, this is... Uh, yeah, well, like, what it's is like it? a control mage. Right. What is this? What is it? what is this mage? <laughs> One urgent squire. Yeah, it it takes like elements of like Trump's mage, you know, where you just play pretty straight up control with polymorphs and yeah, just I try to just play mid range and Trump's push. arena mage or like then it's got like ice lance as like a finisher, I guess. <laughs> One ice block. So yeah. One ice block. Why not? Gadget Sun. Well, One there's a spell. I don't know Actually, why he has the Arten Squire in this deck. It doesn't have any buff or something. And Isera again. Like, Isera yeah. is a, a pretty strong card. Well, Isera makes more sense in this deck. Uh, I kind of agree with Ty's. Like, the Arjun Squire seems a little out place. Maybe he just wants a third one drop. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Double Polymorph is also pretty harsh. I mean, sometimes Polymorph just sits in your hand and you really feel like you shouldn't use it. Especially if there is like a free free on board for free mana, you feel like, oh, if I polymorph it, it's kind of like a lost polymorph. Yeah, I mean, polymorph is still one of the best removals in the game, though. Like, so it's it's not it's not a bad card. It's just again, most mage decks felt like they could get on without it because they could just remove it with re- like spells or minions in that respect. Yeah, so it's just uh, it's just interesting like that he's using kind of like an old concept of mage. And then combining it with like Gadget Zan and Ice Lances. And, um, I like Pyromancer here. Like, Pyro a, like an Ice Block. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's got cool small synergies here and there. It's just, it does seem a little sporadic with some of its ideas. That it's not very focused. But maybe that's what makes it work too, because it's kind of unpredictable. Yeah, yeah. we actually, we, we talked about surprise effect, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thais, anything to add about this, this mage deck? No, maybe it's Raynet's uh, mage deck. <laughs> that that yeah. can be the reason why he's playing it. No, I don't know, man. I <laughs> it's really strange deck. I'm missing the yeah, I'm missing some cards like the second of the Antonias. About he's playing with Gadget Sand, but yeah, he doesn't it's... have a lot of cheap spells. So I and not a lot of spells. He has two Frostball, two Iceland. So I don't see the reason, but yeah. It, it burned for him, so it, it it looks like a deck that can win a, every matchup. So it's not a really bad deck. Seems like a very flexible deck with a lot of card draw. And we know from Miracle Rogue that it, even if the deck, the whole deck looks like a weird structure, if you have enough card draw, if you draw like almost the whole deck, it, it might work because you have so many options in, sure. in different card situations. Sure, advantage so. is too much. Yeah. yeah. So let, let's move to the last deck, um, which was uh, Paladin. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> uh, well, hmm. Blessing of Wisdom. That's a, it's a really cool card. I've yeah. toyed around with Blessing of Wisdom so much, but in the end, I, I ended up removing it. <laughs> it. It never does what you want it to do. And when it does, like you can get more than one draw off of it. It's just like, I mean, if you kind of see it as just like a one mana card cycle, then maybe. Uh, but Paladin has much bigger holes it needs to fill rather than just a one card cycle. So 
I just never felt like keeping it in a deck. But if he, if it makes it work, then I mean, he's got also interesting cards like Abomination. Yeah. And uh, well, Yasera, Sarah. of course. <laughs> yeah, Sarah. obviously. <laughs> Well, I like Blessing here probably because there's not enough draw. I mean, Hammer of Wrath and Horizon Jones are the drawing effects. So probably Blessing is, uh, is important. If he, he, yeah. if he can abuse Blessing, then yeah. There is no Acolyte. Uh, and Acolyte works pretty good with Wild Pyromancer. But, uh, well. It's really interesting with all the big, uh, the big guys and then to... Uh, fairy dragons to yeah the wild pyromancers are really good in paladin with the uh, equality but this yeah maybe it's a deck that i think the deck counters uh handlock really good with uh, yeah shaman as well yeah so counters handlock counters shaman anti-agro yeah it's tricky with paladin versus anti-agro because you're so dependent on a few cards <clears throat> like your pyro qualities or your consecration. So like, there's some games where like you just destroy Zoo, but then there's some games where Zoo defenders of Argus, and you're just outside the range to kill it, and there's nothing you can do about it. So it, it kind of depends on. It, it does have a lot of. It does have um, good healing though, so like it can definitely bounce back from some burn decks and whatnot as well. It's kind of seems like a hybrid, but. Between like, uh, I mean, it can go aggro mode as well. Like, if you start with Fury Dragon, follow it up with uh, Peacekeeper or like Sword of Justice, and then just start spawning minions, you'll mm -hmm. be able to go on the aggressive side, and then you have those big minions as a follow up. So, it's kind of cool that a deck like this got really far because it just shows that I think that he he knows how to play this deck better than any of us can immediately on, yeah. upon first few minutes of looking at it. And he knows what he's mulliganing for, and he's operating it, and he knows its deck's strengths and weaknesses. And the fact that it goes far and it's kind of unique is another testament to why people should be experimenting more and creating decks that fit their style as opposed to copying your guys' decks, for example, when they see you guys play in Group C of Dream Because yeah. there's some cards that you just think, like, how does Abomination work with his hero power? Like, doesn't that actually work? <laughs> like, that's yeah. kind of, those kinds of questions <laughs> pop up. But maybe it makes sense for him. Like, I just, uh, you know, maybe it makes sense for a tournament play for France. You know, he was beating a bunch of French people. And yeah, maybe it's a good counter deck to something like the Abonation can be really good against Shaman for all the totems. Or, yeah, I, I don't know. Abomination, Blessing of Wisdom combo. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. A blessing of wisdom is best used on divine shields, though, from my experience. Or like it's, opposing minions. Yeah, but then opposing minions is um, like it's a conditional draw, and you can't rely on it. I, I it, it's it's good in the beginning of the game because it makes them hesitate. But late game, people don't care if you like blessing of wisdom. They're fire elemental because they're doing six damage to the face anyways, and it's like awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever. Like you can draw a card, whatever. Yeah, they, they don't they don't care at that stage. Uh, it, okay. It's like I, I go so back and forth on blessing of wisdom. I don't know how much you've tested it out, Taj, but like I, I want to like it so much. But I've actually spent a lot of the season trying to play paladin and make a, a blessing of wisdom deck work and stuff. I just couldn't. Now the the, the aggro paladin is really strong now with all the miracles on the ladder and all the hand locks from a week ago. I saw a lot of aggro paladin and it really worked. I tried a bit of aggro paladin and it really worked well against the miracle. And handlock because yeah you, you really rely on your divine favor, but uh, yeah it works really well because they only tapping or with the miracle rogue uh, they take a lot lot of cards and yeah the paladin just spams all the one and two mana minions and then you play a divine favor at turn four or five and take uh, five cards back or something it can be really uh, good now on the ladder. Yeah, yeah, I was saying blessing of wisdom the card. Mm. Not not the class. Mm, I I don't think blessing of wisdom. As uh, you need to play it with a uh, minion with defined shield, then it can be really strong in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, yes, I agree. Th th that's but... what he said exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all right, validation. <laughs> nice. Well, I agree with you guys. So mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe you want some wind fury, but there is it's hard to find a good wind yeah. fury minion. Yeah. You're not going to use it on any 
neutral minion for Paladin, like what Thrallmar Farseer or Wind Fury Harpy? Yeah, yeah, you <laughs> Young Dragon. Know. <laughs> Leper Gnomes. Oh my god, Leper Gnome with Blessing of Wisdom, so good. Drug R, <laughs> if damage. there was a reason to earn shocking <laughs> before. Oh, damn. Okay. So that was the, the tournament Savitz won it. Uh, we'll probably ask him a couple of questions about it in the future. But moving forward, Gentlemen's Cup League is in motion. Uh, let's go to the site, to actually the Team League with Wikipedia, and let's have a look at the results. I think they're not updated, um, because to, today yeah. there, were, there were some games. Yeah, Innovation won against uh, Isuba, and we were able to win against uh, Team Mia. And Wait, yeah, Innovation we are number one Isuba? now. Yeah, Innovation won against Isuba in the ace match. Nice, that's an upset actually. Because and, Innovation... yeah, and we won against Team Mia. So um, Meteor Makers and Team Mia are four two now, and yeah, the the rest is uh, three three. Okay, so uh, so looking at the list, like Team uh, MIA was on the first place, and then MYM is second, or like even MYM might be first, right? Because yeah, we want we want three one. So I think we are first now. You might be first, yeah. So Frodan, look at that! Like we we're talking about M MYM trying to get their spot, and here they are having first place uh, after after the standings will be updated. So. Team yeah. is doing even um, head to head. Mym beat Doggy House. Taj beat Strife Crow not once, but oh yeah. no, he beat Strife Crow and, and, and then he beat Echo. Yeah, I was gonna say I thought you beat him twice. But. It was Strife Crow uh, during the normal rounds and then Echo in the in the yeah ace in match, the right? ace match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the first uh, the first series in the game. We the first match in the league we played against uh, against you and Dog House. I really, really miss uh, Curse and Temple Storm um, from this list. Like, uh, I, I hope that when we f finish this league, like, we'll have another league, um, and then like Curse and Temple Storm will be able to play as well. Yeah, it's uh, probably because it is an European tournament. But what I see now, it's uh, it are all European teams, so maybe that's the reason for it. I don't know. Yeah, that might be. Um, I know. So, uh, I know. Team Roots had also uh, an invite oh. in the qualifier, but they, were yeah, they didn't course, qualify right? for it. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a pretty cool tournament. There's a lot of games being played, and uh, we have what seven more weeks of games, right? It was uh, the... We are really dang. It's fourteen eight. weeks. So yeah, eight. No, yeah, I eight think. more weeks. Eight, eight more weeks. So. Go Doggy House, we still have a chance. <laughs> huh? Well, without Strife Crow, you're kind of boned, IMO. Oh, actually, yeah. Do you even have enough players to field? <laughs> we'll have to freelance another player, probably. Ah. Uh, uh. Because Strife Crow is, uh, for those who don't know, like Ch Strife Crow is in China right now for two weeks. So, if anybody's watching and they want to freelance for Doggy House for the Gentleman Cup, who should yeah. they contact, Nimsh? Yeah, all contact Nimsh. They can contact me, uh, I guess, on Twitter. <laughs> but uh, I'm looking at one player uh, at one player right now, and I'm not talking about you two guys. <laughs> Unless, Thais, you can uh, betray your team for a couple of cards. <laughs> <laughs> No. Ty's joining Doggy House. For <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sound like every girl I asked to prom. Well, me? <clears throat> no, Ty, the way he laughs and said no. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, well, like any any comments about this tournament? I, I guess like the league is fine. It's going on um, moving forward, and that's it about this about the league. Thais, do, do you want to have? Uh, do you want to say anything else, like about your team? Like, how are you performing? Are you happy with your lineups? Are you actually changing lineups? Uh, for yeah, we round? are changing lineups uh, every week. Uh, everyone uh, get a change in the league to to get the name out. And yeah, it's 
It's a bit, uh, we are not always, so I, I'm going to DreamX, so I'm skipping this week, and every week uh, someone, it's hard for someone to play. And yeah, we, we don't have problems with it, so. I, I really like the fact we are with a big team, so we can uh, make good choices uh, what we want to set up uh, against our opponents. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, I, we have to freelance players, <laughs> and you can just uh, leisurely yeah. like swap people. That's mm -hmm. pretty good. Pretty good. Florian, closing words about the uh, team league. Uh, I think team leagues are really cool. There's a new one coming out called Hearth Wars that people should go check out. Um, it's because it sounds cool in concept, where like players bet their own money essentially uh, with a buy-in. It's not. I mean, I guess that's like a very Poor way to phrase that, but like it's it's essentially like players putting up their own money to win more money, and um, how does I'm it work? To see how it's gonna pan out. So basically, it's uh, it's gonna be like a league where the teams, um, everyone's gonna be playing, but you choose two represent ten, two representatives from your team to go, and there's like a ten dollar buy in, and then based on how many people buy in, then um, they just keep playing, and then whoever comes out on top is the the winner basically it's, it's just like a regular tournament but it kind of represents teams as opposed to just like just individuals that they invite um i think that they're always looking for more teams to join i think like root wanted to join which um according to just recent reports by the way this is breaking news if anybody oh my God. wondering whether or not this show is live or pre-recorded i don't know why we get that criticism it's that uh amaz has joined root oh sorry he's left he left root to join team liquid wow Wait, so like, oh. uh, this is two pieces of news. Like, first, he left, then there is a Team Liquid now. Yeah. I mean, it, why, why does that surprise anybody, though? Like, Liquid's been looking to... I mean, they've been looking to pick up somebody for a while, right? Based off, like, Liquid Hearth and, you know, the coverage of it. They have TeamLiquid.com for StarCraft. They have Liquid Dota for Dota. Mm -hmm. So, like, why wouldn't they pick up Hearthstone? I no, think that like, was a lot it's big okay. news actually because like yeah. a lot of a lot of players were waiting for Team Liquid to start a Hearthstone team, and now we are saying that they, in fact, did start a team. Yeah. So what, I think what do you know? What do you know? Like throw the news, throw the news. Like yeah. give us all the information you have. Okay, so uh, Amaz, Team Liquid to sign Amaz. I'm clicking through it right now. Let me read the report. Um, this is reported by Richard Lewis, who's always on top of his stuff, I guess. Uh, Team Liquid will pick up the first Hearthstone player in their illustrious history tomorrow when they reveal that they would add Jason Amaj Chan, a.k.a. Frodan, a.k.a. Chan Man, a.k.a. Trump, a.k.a. Hafu, a.k.a. Raynan, to their roster. The player who only joined Root Gaming in March this year will be subject to an undisclosed transfer fee to take him to his new home. Team Liquid has focused significantly on the development of Hearthstone. Yada, yada, yada. Chan, a Hong Kong resident, has been grabbing attention as a streamer having hit legend status only using free-to-play pre-stack that shows his true mastery of his class. <laughs> his popularity has soared, seeing him 91,000 Twitch followers and 63k YouTube subscribers. He's also shown his capability on the competitive scene as his recent semi-final finish at DreamHack Bucharest. It'll be announced tomorrow when you'll see Chan represent Liquid at the $25,000 tournament in DreamHack Summer coming this weekend. He probably will have a shirt this time compared to DreamHack Bucharest. <laughs> yeah. He's been placed in a group with the winner, DreamHack Bucharest, Peter Gara Stevanovic. You know that. You know what's sad? It's like the sad part is uh, he wasn't able to use his shirt for DreamHack Bucharest from Root, and now he won't be able to use the shirt again because he changed the team. Yeah. Sorry, Root. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Root still has good players though. Like shows great. Um, you know, six zero when. Six so when Eggy is not being an egghead, Eggy, and uh, you know they they have a good roster of talent. It's just sad that Amaz left without Root ever truly like representing in a team league. Like and, and as much as Amaz was part of Root, I never really felt like I really never felt like Root got a chance to be who they are in Hearthstone. In uh, in StarCraft, for people who don't know, Root is kind of like a band of brothers where they kind of get together, host podcast, talk all the time to each other, and they're just kind of like a family. And um, as much as Root was starting to do that with some of their streams and Skype calls and stuff, it never really like picked up a lot, in my opinion. And it's just kind of a shame, because Root's a really big family, and Katz is, Katz is a great guy. 
So what about Team Liquid? Um, Amaz is the first person. They would probably look for three more, right? Possibly. I mean, it depends on whether or not they want to enter. Like, if Team Leagues become a thing, but I, I imagine so. I imagine so. I think unless, so, too. Uh, unless you're hinting Nimsh at something, because Doggy House has gone without a sponsor for a long time. <laughs> and this is my weekly update on asking what's going on with Doggy House. <laughs> How many, how many people do we have? Like, or how many are we freelancing? Because I lost count. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, three people know. are left. Team Liquid is looking for three people. Mm. Maybe, maybe you never know. It makes sense. Actually, I kind of want to ask you, um, how much have you got? And this is like a real talk moment. Artosis has oh a real talk. Won Come a on. Series Bring in a it. Long time. Artosis hasn't won a series in a long time for Gentleman Club. I actually forgot to bring this up in the previous topic. Um, how how much is he practicing with you guys now? And like how hard has he like been training? Or is it just kind of been like him logging on saying, hey guys, what deck should I play? And you're like, oh, this is really good. So he tries playing it and <laughs> he doesn't have much practice. Because that's the kind of impression I get when I watch him play sometimes. Like when Artosis like tries and like practice, like his his preparation for OGN, for example, made total sense. When he blogged about it, it was very intelligent. But like, you know, he's not performing well in team leagues and stuff. So, um, what's going on, Nimsh? Yeah, I mean, uh, a fun, funny, funny, fu funny fact is that when uh, every time, uh, every week, we have a new group against another team, we name this group Artosis. Please respond because um, the player who's facing <laughs> Artosis always has a problem to contact him, more or less. Um, we, I mean, yeah, like Dan, as we mentioned before, um, Dan is extremely busy uh, with, with work with StarCraft, uh, also like spending time with his family. So he's not putting that much effort into Hearthstone, unfortunately, which uh, bursts um, some effects, as you've seen, because we know that the, the man can really like um, devote himself to the game. We've seen it before GN, we've seen it before BlizzCon. Artosis is still great. It's just like, I was yeah. just curious, like, um, what was going on? Uh, specifically, because it seems like uh, you like the rest of you guys. Because we're talking about freelancing for the league and stuff. So yeah, um, I was just curious. That's all. I don't want to like harp on it too much. No, no. I mean, he's uh, still a great, great player, but um, he he needs to like practice more for sure. Like definitely for the league. And um, this is also an interesting thing he about Harson. Basically, as soon as what? possible. He needs to clone himself basically as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah. He needs to like spend one Artos is for Starcraft, one Artos is for Hearthstone. That would be the best outcome. All right, sorry, sorry. to detract. Uh, back yeah, no to... problem, no problem. That's, that's um, fine. So I don't know who Liquid would pick up, but Amaz fits Liquid's identity really, really well because Liquid's all about like being mannered clean. and well connected. Yeah. yeah, clean, very presentable. Fam I like to say family friendly. Um, another person that kind of just fits that perfectly would be Trump. And I, I for, for the longest time, I thought Trump was on liquid value. I thought liquid was signed somebody. I assume Trump would be the first person that liquid picked up. It almost made too much sense that, like, I thought it was just inevitability. Uh, but I guess it's not happening. I think Trump is flying solo for the time being because I think he got offered by a lot of teams, but he hasn't accepted anything. Um, so... I don't know who Liquid's going to pick up next, but if I had to pick a person, I would say Trump, but I don't think that actually will happen. I don't know. I, I guess I would say that. I think he fits pretty well there. Yeah, maybe they, they are taking some time to look at, uh, look at some new talent or looking for players that are, don't have a team yet. Or Yeah, I think they probably take some time. and look, Maybe they look uh, looking at Dreamac. Uh, maybe there will be some... Uh, People from the qualifier that will get really high, and people and teams will teams will uh, probably uh, contact them, and we will see. Yeah, I agree. Like, there is no point in rushing uh, the team building. So you really, ha you if you invest into those people, you you build a group. You really want to have the people with uh, who are well. They are good and great players on one hand, but on the other hand, there is like the team chemistry. Because if you really get conflicting characters, your team will fall apart uh, sooner, sooner or later. So you really want to have that. Uh, you, you're building a team as a long-term re relationship with the players. So it's better to take their time and, and really find the players that fit the profile. Cool. I agree. Okay. Um, 
Well, that's actually mostly it, guys. Like, do you do you want to discuss anything else uh, for today? Uh, not really. I think we can. Um, I mean, we talked a little bit about the meta. We talked about tournament stuff. Pretty much just previewing DreamHack was my biggest priority because I want people to be really hyped for the event. Yeah, I'm, I'm everyone is flying today or tomorrow. I think. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm really excited. Okay, so um, we, we are excited for DreamHack. We'll be there. We'll be meeting in person and we'll be meeting the fans as well. So for now, I guess we can uh, close the show and uh, move to shoutouts. So Froden, you first. Shoutouts. Shoutouts to, um, to Well Met because my interview will be posted on Friday. So make sure to check that out. I talk about all kinds of things from my past my present, my future, and um, even about what happened at ESN just a little bit. So go check that out. Uh, it's being done by On Gamers. Um, shout out to Chairman who had me today for Deck Wars. I hope he has a safe trip and um, that he's able to you know, kick ass at DreamHack. Um, shout out to the new guys I'm working with on my cool project, which you guys will hear more about in a couple of days. And um, thanks, Nemsh, again for hosting. And thank you, Taj, for being on the show. Nice. Your shoutouts. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will thank uh, my team Meet Your Makers for all the changes I got and for everything, and that they can send me to DreamHack. I want to shout out uh, my family that they uh, that they really accept uh, uh, that I'm uh, still uh, playing uh, the game, and and shout out uh, of course to uh, to the Turn Two show and to I Heart You. For my uh, yeah, I'm still uh, playing in the uh, King of the Hill, so I hope uh, you guys can watch it. Uh, I think it will be streamed Friday. Yeah, that are my shout shout outs. Okay, um, and on my side, like shout outs to Team Dogger House as always. Um, shout out to well, shout out to Applejack for being awesome on a show. <laughs> like Froden hosted, uh, casted it like before this show. Uh, Deck Wars on Machinima channel. There will be a VOD. Uh, Applejack versus Trump. It was a cool show, really, like a cool showing. So shout out to to the to the man for giving a good show there. And um, yeah, like shout out to to Zach, who is our producer here and who's making this show being awesome. Like he's putting the overlays and doing the, the all the stuff. So so shout out to Zach. And obviously shout out to the King of the Hill as well. And uh, shout out to I Harvest Side. We recently had a very good uh, Miracle Rogue article. Uh, it's called Miracle Rogue, How Magic is Made. So definitely recommend that one. Uh, check it out. Check out the site. Uh, check out the forums. And that's mostly it for this week. Do you guys have anything else to add? No. Um, give it all my shoutouts. Oh, well, I guess thanks to my family as well. <laughs> I... I I don't okay. want to seem like I'm thankless to my own family and stuff. Great. No. So, dice. Any last words? No, not really. Tune in to DreamHack, guys, at viagame.com. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure to tell your friends, tell your families, get your dog a laptop and have him watch it as well. Um, anything, just continue to promote it. And maybe we can do something cool um, from the event as well to have some fun stuff to show you guys. Actually... Actually, I have the biggest shout out, which I totally forgot. So there is something else. Like, I talked to a lot of pro players, like top sixty, uh, top sixteen seated guys, and a lot of them answered that there are no Murlocs at the event. Like nobody, literally, is playing is going to play Murlocs. And there is one concerned Murloc, and he will be at the event. So, guys, meet Murky. He's here. <laughs> he will be a dream hack. Talking to Reynat, talking to all the other guys. So <laughs> okay. check out my check out my Instagram uh, during mm -hmm. the event. I'll be doing a lot of photos. Uh, Murky will be doing discussion panel, probably. Talking to Seltzer, please as well. So a lot of fun pictures, a lot of fun stuff, and that's mostly it. So thank you for watching the show. See you next Wednesday, and see you at Dreamhack. Later. Later. <laughs>